Hello, everybody. Welcome again to a special episode of the Point Forward podcast. My name is J.R. Radcliffe. Sitting across from me is one Ben Steele. He covers the Marquette men's well, and women's basketball teams for uh, for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Both Marquette teams are headed to the big dance. We can mention the women's team here in a minute. They got a number nine seed on selection Sunday. The men's team is, I think a lot of people know, a number two seed. That is mm. the best seed in school history. You know, technically, like, you know, we they started seeding that thing out in 1979. So, like, let's be honest. <laughs> there were some teams that would have been ones and twos. But, um Ben, Ben, you had a, I'm assuming, a pretty interesting time in New York going to uh, Madison Square Garden. What, what uh, we have to start in the most important place. What, what did you do outside of basketball at when you when you were in New York? You get to pretty much go every year at the Big East tournament. Yeah, that, this was a little bit longer trip than last year when when Marquette went one and done, uh, losing to Creighton in, in Thursday, the Thursday slate of the Big East games. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, there was a, really wasn't a lot of personal Downtime. time. Uh, you know, I got there, I flew into Newark, lovely Newark Airport, and took the train straight to the Garden. Um, and, that. you know, Tyler Kolick and Shaka Smart were honored as Coach and Player of the Year, respectively. They had a big press conference that day. Um, so I got out a little that night. Um but otherwise, there was a lot of time spent inside Madison Square Garden. Yeah, well, if things go well, that's exactly where Marquette's going to be for the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. The bracket yeah, would have crazy. them going back to the scene of the Big East tournament. So, uh, so yes, Marquette wins three games in that tournament. And uh, and we'll talk about their seeding. They, they play Vermont, of course, 15th seed. Uh, the Catamounts. Catamounts. Oh, we'll have to talk about the Catamounts. <laughs> what a delightful collection of mascots in this in this tournament, by the way, and uh, and again we can discuss that. In a minute. Raging pa- Cajuns, Paladins, it's a yeah. good time, it's great. Uh, but um, let's start with why Marquette was able to get up to a number two seed, and and that was really because they finished with such a flourish here, and and they won two absolute nail biters. Mm-hmm. They beat a UConn team that I quite honestly think is probably just as good as they are, if mm-hmm. not a little better. And uh, and it came out, it came down to the final moments. Marquette made some great plays on defense. Oh, just an incredible final three minutes of defense. To uh, steal that one, and then they absolutely uh, take take Xavier to the woodshed. I think we could say mm-hmm. like Xavier bounced back into that game, but that was uh, that was Marquette from the jump. Um, what 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 are your takeaways here from from the Big East tournament? I mean, that's the first time they've ever won it. Obviously, mm-hmm. that's a big deal. Marquette playing at the absolute peak of its powers. <laughs> Did you know they were picked to finish ninth in the preseason what? poll? Um, first time hearing of that. <laughs> one team got in the what was it? Kansas State picked to finish last in the in the uh, Big Twelve. Is that right? And they're like a three seed or four Correct, seed. Yeah. So uh, Marquette th- could face them. Y- oh, that's right. That's right. So uh, that would be a storyline that we'll have to revisit. But. Uh, what what are kind of the two or three things that really stand out from that Big East tournament? Because because uh, that was uh, some impressive stuff, some nail biting, but also just great stuff for Marquette. As you mentioned, you know Marquette has surprised a lot of people this season, and they even surprised me a little bit. Uh, as a guy who's watched every game pretty closely this season, they they surprised me those last two games, especially um, against UConn. It was you know if you had told me that Osoe Gadaro. Tyler Kolick, David Joplin would all be in foul trouble, you know, <laughs> serious deep foul trouble, and Oso Iguodaro would play only six minutes in the second half and half the game overall. You know, with the with Marquette's thin front court, I would have said Marquette would have zero shot against UConn and their big behemoths, Adam Adama Sinogo and Donovan Klingon off the bench. Yeah, that's just a terrible matchup. So. <laughs> it, you would have thought. Yeah, you would have thought. I mean, coming into the game, I was one of the guys that who would have said UConn was going to win that game. Um, so. You know, it's on me as a as a hater too. So um, <laughs> you are one of them. I'm one of them. Um, but like, like they have so much, so many times this season, this Marquette team surprised us in that UConn game. It was David Joplin, the, you know, the local kid, coming off the bench. He was had at six seven. He was forced to guard those big guys, but on the other end, he was coming up huge, like hitting big three pointers, spacing out the the those big men away from the basket on the offensive end, and and defensively, I think that was. The biggest takeaway for me was those last two games. You mentioned the stops at the end of the UConn game, but I, I think that first half against Xavier, like Xavier never stood a chance from the jump just with the way we, we knew Marquette's offense was good. It's been good all season, been top five in Ken Palm for the last several months, um, number one for a long time earlier this season. Defensively, you could see flashes throughout the year, but that first half against Xavier, they were awesome. Like deflections, what – Everything that Shaka Smart preaches on defense, activity, defense, gang rebounding, helping each other when team when you you know players get beat, it was all working in concert in that first half against Marquette or against Xavier. So that was 
maybe that first half might be as good as I've seen them play. You know, offensively against Baylor early in the season, they were, they were dominant. That was probably their best performance offensively early this season. But combined offense and defense, it might have been that first half against Xavier. Marquette, uh, you know, I, this this team, you know, first of all, let's talk about David Joplin because he this team for a while, the last few years, have, has not had a presence from the state of Wisconsin on this mm-hmm. roster. That was not always the case. The 2003 team loaded with Wisconsinites. Diener, yes, yeah. yes, Dwayne Wade is the highlight. But right, Diener, Novak. Robert Jackson, Scott Merritt, yeah. Steve Novak. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple others. I'm drawing a blank probably mm-hmm. on, on one or two more. This is a different situation for Marquette. They just they just haven't pulled from the state, and I don't know if that correlates to maybe a pulling back of, of sort of the statewide fandom that this team has had. I feel like over the last few years, it's been it's been just a Milwaukee team, and mm-hmm. um, you know I think that's also a little bit understandable. Wisconsin has a much dr- bigger you know alumni base to draw from, so that's partially why you kind of get that dichotomy here in in Wisconsin, but. Even even this year, I didn't feel like Marquette really captured the imagination of the state of Wisconsin. But da- but David Joplin's a great place to start. Mm-hmm. Biggie, sixth man of the year from mm-hmm. Brookfield Central High School, like you said. Obviously, the coach Shaka Smart, uh, a Wisconsin native from Oregon High mm-hmm. School. But uh, I-, I feel like maybe the tide is turning a little bit. I don't know what you sense of that. If you feel like uh, certainly among the Marquette fan base, this is the most energized they've been, and uh, you know why not? Of course, uh, in two years, Shaka Smart has taken this team from a project into a, a bona fide national title contender. But uh, but I don't know. What, do, do you have any sense? Kind of, I know you're in it. So maybe maybe it's harder to sort of capture what you feel like, the, how the state is responding to this. I, I don't even know if this is a big story. I feel like it should be even maybe a yeah. bigger story that they're in two seed in the NCAA tournament. That's just a wild turn of events. So I don't know. Do you have any thought on that? Any comment on that? Or is that just too hard for, for you know, a guy in your position to kind of get your arms around? Well, I've definitely noticed that the bandwagon has gotten a lot fuller the last, <laughs> the last month or so. And, uh, you know, that's statewide. I think that's even nationwide when you see national pundits and, and sure, a lot of people. Sure. You saw Jay Wright on CBS yesterday picking Marquette to get to the championship game. So handsome. Um, yeah. In a, an incredibly, impeccably tailored it's, suit. It's just wild. He's, um, he's elite. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, just if you win, you're going to get more attention. That's just the way, you know, obviously th- that's just the way it goes. Um, statewide, yeah, I, I, I'm definitely starting to, to – there's definitely more buzz. And I think, you know, I spent all my time in the city of Milwaukee, so maybe that's a kind of bias on my part, that a recency bias or uh, – Geography bias. I don't know if that's a if that's yeah. a scientific term, but um, oh, it's a thing. That's uh, yeah. I could definitely feel the attention, especially in the last week after Marquette got the outright title and that uh, against Butler in the second to last regular season game, and then this three game run in, in the Big East tournament, in Madison Square Garden. It's uh, the electricity was there. Yeah, I, I think nationally, when when people start printing out brackets, seeing a high seeded team that isn't a perennial title contender they're going to get they're, they're going to be a sexy upset pick mm-hmm. it, especially with this this corner this east regional that i don't think is particularly loaded i i feel like there are other regionals that are certainly tougher so i'm going to look at that uh just just real quickly mm-hmm. here um if marquette beats vermont in the first round which uh we should we should maybe talk about the catamounts a little <laughs> bit but assuming that happens they would face either USC or Michigan State. Super interesting possibility there with Michigan State. Mm. Joey Hauser, of course, is a senior leader for the Spartans. Mm. He started his career at Marquette University and then transferred in a pretty high-profile situation. Stevens Point High School product and one of the leaders of the Spartans. That would certainly be an intriguing second-round matchup. USC has a, has a Wisconsin kid as well on mm. their roster from Nicolet High School, mm. Kobe Johnson. Mm-hmm. So uh, brother of Jalen Johnson mm-hmm. plays for the Atlanta Hawks. So there's a little intrigue there as well. Um couple kids that you know in one case Marquette very much did recruit and I guess theoretically could have recruited uh, uh, Kobe Johnson as well so um, just in this first setting this first group the first weekend what uh, what strikes you what do you know about Vermont and and kind of where is there anywhere where they could give Marquette problems and then who do you think uh, maybe matches up better in that second round game uh, I I know a little. I haven't watched a lot of Marquette or uh, Vermont games. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, the America watched, East is not tripping your uh, what, not, your free time uh, fancy. I, I've looked at their stats. I've looked at the players there. Uh, they got a lot of old guys. Uh, Dude, all of, of guys these have been all around of these teams. They, they got a guy that uh, I was reading about that played at um, Delaware and then 
went to UConn for three years just as a student to get his undergrad degree, no and then way. three years later he's come back and playing his last year of college basketball at uh, with Vermont with the Catamounts. Look, I don't not to interrupt you, but like these teams, these mid major or low major, however you want to look at it, they're all like they're Colgate almost, has a twenty five yeah, year old guy on the roster, yeah. <laughs> and he's great. And they could, I mean, that's a two fifteen. Texas should win that game. That's a different region, but like. You know, you cannot possibly replicate the volume of experience that these teams have right now because of the extra COVID year. There are mm-hmm. there are guys who aren't going to play pro basketball, so they are 24, 25 years old. They've been playing basketball for like seven yeah. years. That's that's interesting. I feel like that could pose some issues for some teams in this tournament. But anyway, carry on. Yeah, carry on. It, you look at their shooting numbers. They're always a good shooting team. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have been going back to their previous coach now under um, the current regime. Um, so, but I I still that. If, if you look at the list of the competition they played, they haven't played anybody near right. the caliber of, of Marquette. So yeah. they're not defensively. I think they're going to be in for a, a surprise when they when they see this top ranked, you know, one of the top five Ken Palm offenses in the nation. But, so, you know, like the caveat always, this is March. You know, all the cliches are true. You can't take anyone lightly. So, yeah. Um, yeah Ta- sec- Taylor Coppenrath not coming through that door <laughs> for our catamounts here. Yeah. Um, T.J. Sorrentine, right? Oh, yeah, great pull. Fantastic. Um, uh, so yeah, the second sec- round. Second round, yeah. The Joey Hauser subplot, that's, you know, that that's an inevitable storyline there if that if that game gets in. Although there's, oh, that's an A plot. There's no, not a lot of connections left at Marquette that, that, that were around when he played. Right. Um, there's a handful of support staff people, but there's no <laughs> players left there, no coaches from the previous regime when when Joey was here for for a season and season and a half really um all right it's not the same like traditionally you would say with this Marquette team with their issues with rebound and giving up a lot of offensive rebounds typically that would be uh a Tom Izzo coached tough rebounding team would would pose some issues for for Marquette but this is a little this isn't quite the 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 same caliber of Michigan team, Michigan State team that's uh, you would think of when you when you think of a Tom Izzo team, but we'll see. So if they're if they are to get out of that, there are a couple teams they could see in the Sweet Sixteen again. That would be in the Ma- in Madison Square Garden, back at the scene Damn. of the uh, the Big East Championship, and the first team could be Kansas State, no longer coached by Bruce Weber, uh, but again, yeah. that was a team that has a very similar arc to Marquette, and that mm-hmm. they were picked to not do well, and they just went ahead and did very well. Uh, or Kentucky, Providence, you can't count them out as a first round a team to beat Kentucky in the first round. Uh, right. Montana State is a team that sees Kansas State. Kentucky has played Marquette ten <laughs> times in the NCAA tournament, ten times. Yeah, I think we were talking about that the, uh, the other week. That Insane. Wisconsin and and Marquette just. It's it's inevitable that those that they'll run into a Kentucky team somewhere down it's the totally line true. in the bracket. Of course, Dwayne Wade's uh, triple double in mm-hmm. two thousand three in the Elite Eight is against Kentucky. Marquette's won the last three meetings against them, but uh, I believe it's six and four. I believe is the record in those ten games, if I remember correctly. So, uh, just constant. Uh, you know, the nineteen ninety four game with Tony Miller that you wrote about earlier this year comes to mind. Mm-hmm. For I mean, it, everybody who follows Marquette will have a story about seeing them play Kentucky in the. NCAA tournament. This is a Kentucky team that looked really bad for most of the season mm-hmm. in terms of expectations versus what was happening. They looked absolutely destined for the NIT or something like the first four. They were able to turn it around in the sa- in the latter half of the season. They have some very good wins, uh, including you know over I think Tennessee was number one at the time in the SEC. I, I might be misremembering that, but they uh, they they got the ship righted. Very young team, as is uh, often the case with Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, that's so, uh, that's kind of interesting. That's a uh... When you talk about on paper matchups for Marquette, Kentucky might be one of the worst ones you could draw up mm. for Marquette. Just with Oscar Sheboy, just a human rebounding machine, um, that's a lot of second tra- chance points waiting to happen against Marquette's front line. Um, and then you got Kaysen Wallace, the freshman guy on Kentucky, that's a really, really, really good defender. That's where he's probably going to make his bones in the NBA probably as soon as next season. Um, it, you got a player like that that can guard Tyler Kolick, mm-hmm. uh and slow down Marquette's the engine of Marquette's offense. So on paper, that that's got to be one that that scares you if you're a Marquette yeah. fan. Yeah, I like that. I, I think you're absolutely right. But maybe Providence gets Kentucky in the first round. You're right about Sheboy. Not quite the National Player of the Year candidate that he that he was when he won that award last year, but mm-hmm. still uh, an absolute monster on the glass. As good a rebounder as college basketball has, quite honestly, has ever, ever, seen, ever yeah. seen. So especially for a guy his size, really, really impressive stuff. Um, and then you look at the one seed. Obviously, this is all on paper. There's, you know, it could be Florida Atlantic against Marquette mm-hmm. in the Elite Eight. We have no idea. Florida Atlantic, we have a very good team for a nine mm-hmm. seed, but um, Purdue. 
vulnerable. And I want to say as vulnerable as any of the one seeds are, they just haven't played dominant basketball mm -hmm. down the stretch. Now they won the Big Ten tournament. They won the Big Ten outright. So, like, obviously, I, I'm I'm <laughs> – I, I am splitting hairs to some degree. They are a one seed, and they have a seven foot four big man who mm -hmm. is a national player to con you know player of the year contender in his own right, and uh, and a truly special talent. But if you are quick enough to deny him that basketball, yep. and you are quick enough on the perimeter to defend that stuff, that is going to be a test. But I think Marquette is equipped to handle that, and they've. I like Marquette against Purdue. I feel like that is an okay matchup for them. And ultimately, I think I'd pick Marquette to beat Purdue. I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, being a little too uh, too optimistic. Too. What, what did well, we decide? There's a geography uh, a geography, geography bias. bias. Let's yeah. let's lean into it. Let's pick Marquette in the Final Four. Well, you think back to the third game of the season for Marquette. That Marquette was up nine on the road in Lafayette mm -hmm. and had a chance to close it out. And now Marquette hadn't quite learned how to close out games that early in the season, but. They were really good against, I mean, Zach Eady's not, still put up pretty good numbers in that game, but, um, you know, Marquette's really good at doubling the post, and they they have all the super athletic guys on the on the backside to kind of cover for the for the open guys that, that the double team leaves open. Um, and Marquette's gotten way better on defensively, like we just talked about a, a few minutes ago, since that early in the season. Um, and, yeah, but Purdue, you know, they got those freshman guards that have kind of hit the wall a little bit the last the last yeah. month and um if you want to go up against a, a a marquette team that likes to pressure the ball and has guys that gets up into you as if you're trying to dribble and start the offense that that could cause some issues if, if you're purdue of course it would be it would be foolish to just overlook the idea that it will for sure be purdue in that game mm -hmm. duke and tennessee two other teams in this uh, in this bracket that that top half of the bracket that could absolutely get into the elite eight duke playing as well as anyone in the country right now mm -hmm. tennessee for a time was the number one team in the country so uh those are those are very good teams and uh, and yeah those those guards of purdue they they were really just such a such a surprise mm -hmm. such a you know these aren't like blue chip prospects who just came out of the gate absolutely dealing and uh yeah, they've tapered off a little bit. Purdue, though, did have a second win. You know, like there mm -hmm. was a period of time where it's like, okay, they've fallen. You know, the, their early momentum, which was so hot, has fizzled. They got it back. They won the Big Ten tournament. You know, even though those were those were dog fights, they they won them. They won all three. Mm -hmm. So, uh, props to props to the Boilermakers. Matt Painter, of course, has not been to a Final Four. Mm. Always eager to find that coach, the greatest coach uh, in the in the mm. field, who is not uh, has not already been to a, a Final Four. And uh, Matt Painter probably as good as anybody on that list right mm -hmm. now. Uh, of course, we are all looking forward to a Texas A&M Marquette <laughs> National Championship game involving Buzz Williams. Yeah. Storylines uh, write themselves. <laughs> yeah, I can find them. <laughs> I can find them just about anywhere. Uh, there's a lot of Wisconsinites in this tournament. So, um, yeah. so yeah, I, I'm curious what you think. Oh, and uh, to go back to our, our handsome friend Jay Wright, he he actually picked Marquette to make the, the National mm -hmm. Championship game yeah, against, Kansas. against Kansas. Yeah. Yes, Cavs Kansas winning. Because clearly, as a 13-year-old boy, Jay Wright loved watching that Kansas Marquette National Championship game in 1974. So oh, uh, he, I, I got to think that's uh, that's some some nostalgia there. That would certainly be something we would definitely have a storyline if that were if that were the case. Probably many, many, many because Marquette would be in a national championship game. Um, this team, I feel like it snuck up on it snuck up on people. Clearly, they no one expected the team to be as good as it was coming into the season. That's been well documented. Mm. How good are we talking in terms of Marquette history? Because, you know, Marquette's got Mar – Marquette had that period of time with the big three, you know, Dom James, Jarrell McNeil, mm -hmm. Wesley Matthews, teams that were awesome. Those three guys were awesome. They never made it out of the first weekend. You know, they never mm -hmm. made it to the Sweet 16. And then Buzz Williams takes a few teams further. You know, I mean, Vander Blue has that in insane tournament in 2013 where he was just Johnny on the spot. They get all the way to the Elite Eight fall to Syracuse that team probably overachieved in the tournament mm -hmm. safe to say but still like that was that was a pretty good team I mean this there have been some great players Jay Crowder Jimmy Butler Darius Johnson Odom that have come through here mm -hmm. w where does this one rank like it's it's really kind of hard for me to contextualize what this team looks like in, in the history of Marquette yeah a lot of those Buzz Williams teams they were just kind of super scrappy defensive teams that that would win a lot of rock fights right yeah and, but but this Marquette team could score as well pretty easily um, about as good offensively as I think any Marquette team in in history, just efficiency wise. Um, so that always gives you a chance. And then, like we talked about, if the defense can continue the trajectory that's been on for the past month, and and they're never going to get to the level that the offense is at, but if they can get to a respectable level, um, I think that that makes them really dangerous. And yeah, man, if 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 that's the case, then you got to go back to. 
you know, the, the 2003 team. And then before that, man, you got to push back to the, to the seventies to, to that. That's the kind of, that's, that's the kind of rare error that this team has the potential to get to. A couple storylines I'm watching elsewhere in the bracket could have a sweet 16 matchup between Alabama and Virginia. Both of those teams coached by Wisconsinites, Tony Bennett, of course, at Virginia, Nate Oates at Alabama. It's been an interesting year for Alabama to mm. say the least yeah. star player who was kind of wrapped up in the, in a murder investigation, it played a small role. There was some controversy about him continuing to let him play, even though he hasn't been charged with a crime, won't be charged with a crime. Nate Oates defending him and gotten mm. himself in some hot water for maybe uh, maybe brushing brushing it aside, not taking it quite so seriously right out of the gate. Uh, Nate Oates is from Watertown. Mm. That that could be a, that could be an interesting matchup. Alabama, I mean, they're the number one overall seed in this tournament. They could they could easily win this thing. Houston is an interesting team. Uh, again, a, a team that I mean they. They've got Final Four pedigree. Like they went to the, they went to a Final Four. Just was that, that was that last last year, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and are always at the top of the tournament. Kelvin Sampson, the coach there, but not from a power conference. So I know that, uh, you know, I, I know that there will be people hesitant to put them in the, uh, in that definite championship caliber conversation. But but they, but they are, you know, they're very good. And obviously Kansas is a team that's been about as good as any team all year. Mm -hmm. They can f face UCLA if seeds hold in the. Elite Eight, and that would be just an incredible matchup. But I think the, really there's good. no dominant team this year, so no. it just feels pretty sure. wide open. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. We've uh, we, we just don't have that. Uh, I would say, and I don't know if Kansas uh, Kansas was going into the tournament last year. I would say, or at least they were mm -hmm. one of two or three that you really had to figure would be in that championship game, and then they went ahead and finished the deal. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we have that team this year. I guess maybe Alabama or Kansas are those teams this year, but. Uh, but it's it's interesting. Anything else that you are watching from this bracket? Any storylines that you're watching? You, did you, did you fill out a bracket? You have probably haven't had time to fill no, out a bracket. Yeah, no, I have not. Uh, I've looked at the Marquette's region specifically. Beyond that, I haven't uh, expanded my scope that far. But uh, yeah, who uh, who steps up for Marquette? Because if this team is to go to the Final Four, it's it's obviously it's going to be the players that uh, that have led them here. You know, the Colics and the Igadaros of the world. Mm -hmm. Who's uh, who's who's itching for a breakout? Is there anybody or any aspect of this game? You wrote about their their defense yeah. really stepping up, perhaps in the aftermath of the tournament. What's what's got to happen for them to get that far? Yeah, I think along the lines of the defense, I think not a lot of people recognize how big a part of this team that Olivier Maxence Prosper is. Uh, just being a, a six eight guy who's super athletic, super long, very active defensively. He can guard super quick guards. He can guard big guys. He's so versatile on the defensive end. And he's the guy that you can throw on like a, like a hot player. If they have to play Brandon Miller for Alabama, he's a guy that can guard him or, you know, name any other top perimeter player. Uh, Omax is, 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 is the guy that's going to get the assignment. And offensively, he showed in the biggest tournament, like he, he can step out and hit threes. He can, He's, he's Marquez's best player at drawing fouls on the other team. That's typically not a, a, a strong suit of this team, but Omax is probably the guy that 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 does it best, getting to the paint and and, and drawing contact. Um, David Joplin off the bench, uh, we mentioned him. Uh, when Marquette is shooting threes, it's pretty average three-point shooting team overall, but they have guys that can get hot. David Joplin can get super hot. Cam Jones can get hot. Uh, and when when they're hitting threes, I mean that the offense is just impossible to stop. Um, so that those are that those are the guys that they're kind of the unsung heroes of, of the team. If I try to invent intangibles, I think every time this every time this tournament rolls around, we try to pretend there's any science whatsoever. There's no science whatsoever. There's no model that told you St. Peter's was going to win three games in the tournament last mm -hmm. year. It's absolute nonsense. This tournament is nonsense, mm -hmm. and that's why we love it. But if I try to try to imagine something. I, I like how this team has so much fearlessness across the board. They're going to be in environments where they, I mean, Michigan State isn't is, is pretty reasonably close to Columbus. Yeah, like that's yeah. not going to be a partisan crowd for Marquette, at least. I, I think it's going to be 50-50 at, at most charitable. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're going to be environments that are either, it's just not that home, that home crowd juice. They're going to have to invent their own sort of energy. And you've got guys who can do that on the team, like Cam Jones, is fearless. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sean, is, is, the other Jones, Sean Jones, right? Sean Jones, yeah. Fearless when yeah. he's when he's in it. And he's playing. actually from Columbus, so he's going. Oh, he's that's going back perfect. Home. That's perfect. Uh, Omax too. Is there a connection with uh, somebody else on this team? Has some Ohio connections? Am I right or am I wrong? I'm um, making it up. Clearly, Ohio. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. 
We'll figure it out. We'll write about it when it comes up, right? Uh, Chase Ross, another guy who comes off the bench. Yeah. You know, exciting, fearless. They can they can light it up when they have to, and and I feel like that energy is going to carry over, um, especially for a young team that just has not done it. You know, Marquette has not won. When was the last time they won a first round game? It's not 2013. It, it is 2013. This is going to be a decade. And Vander Blue had to save the day right. against Davidson for that to even happen. And yes, then they went to the Elite Eight. Uh, great second round game against Gonzaga. Yeah, that was a I great think, time. And and. Shaka Smart hasn't won a tournament game since he was at VCU. So I since think he went to the if Final they Four. get that first one out of the way against Vermont, yeah, like I mean, get those exercise all those demons, uh, alleviate all the anxieties of the hashtag MUBB community, and uh, <laughs> they're a fun group. Yeah, um, yeah, get get that out of the way, and I think you know, go from there. Real quickly, I want to t- uh, go to the women's team a little bit. They play South Florida. That's They get a nine seed. That's an eight, nine matchup. In the first round of the tournament, you know, there aren't many, bra- you know, there's bracketology all over the internet for the men's tournament. There are fewer options there's, for the yeah. women's tournament. It wasn't clear to me if Marquette was even going to safely be in the tournament. They end up getting a nine seed, which, uh, which obviously is uh, much safer than the 11 seeds with the first four. But I, I don't, obviously, I, I can't tell you a lot about South Florida. Um, I presume that uh, I actually presume most listeners don't know a lot about the market women's team. So just give me a little bit of background on what they've got going on. Chloe Murata of Homestead High School, I know, is one of the top yeah. players on that team. But uh, but what made that team tough and and got got them that tournament resume? Yeah, they were real. They were a real scrappy team. They're they're pretty fun to watch. Like you mentioned, Chloe Murata, she's a very uh, hard nosed banger rebounder, just like her dad was at, at <laughs> Marquette yeah. uh, in the early eighties. Um, and she she's really tough. Like she's Feels like feels like she's been, always been on the team as long as I've been covering the team. Um, this is her, her fifth year playing. Um, I I I don't think they can find any more years of eligibility for. Her. I don't know if they've <laughs> checked the compliance office or if she signed a lifetime contract with them. I'm I'm not sure. Um, but this is definitely her last year. So um, she's looking for her first NCAA tournament win. Um, Jordan King, who I have always been. Uh, huge I, I enjoy watching her game she's a very cerebral point guard uh really good shooter really good scorer just a really smart basketball player very like you can tell her her leadership skills are there she's just kind of the the glue player that every really good team needs um and yeah they're they're another team that hasn't won an, an NCAA tournament game in a while um they were last they, they were in the WNIT last year uh, lost in the first round the year before that. They were going to be in the tournament, uh, Coach Megan Duffy's first season, but that was the, the COVID year, so right. she's looking for her first tournament win. Um, but then if if they do get that first win, then you know you got to face number one South Carolina down there in South Carolina, so that's going to be a tall task. But, you know, this is a season that the Marquette women beat UConn for the first time in program history. Uh, they beat number three Texas early in the season. That kind of open some people's eyes to, to, to just how good and, uh, uh, you know, much better team that, than, than people thought that this Marquette team was going to be. Um, so we'll, we'll see. It's March, you know, anything can happen. That's what, uh, that's, uh, that's the theme that we, uh, that we bring up every year. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is, it is an awesome time of year. It's so fun. I, um, to go back to the men's tournament, I think I'm going to pick Colgate to beat Texas uh, in my bracket. They're the best three-point shooting team? In- they're the best three-point shooting team in the nation. They have the single best three-point shooter in the nation. He comes off the bench for them. And another guy That's who crazy. shoots 46% and doesn't qualify. That's crazy. Uh, they have so much experience. They, they've been to NCAA tournaments before. They gave Wisconsin all they could handle right. in, in Milwaukee, Milwaukee last yeah. year. That was a seven-point game, ultimately. Wisconsin had to really dig deep to make sure that didn't become a problem. I like you can't you can't have a better situation. I, I mean, I don't you know, Texas has been through some stuff this year and they've come out on the other side just fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, won the Big 12, right? Big 12 mm-hmm. tournament. So mm-hmm. like, I, I, you know, I'm picking against a really, really good team, but I don't know. I got a vibe. I got a vibe. I think that's my my hot take for this tournament. Uh, I also uh, looking at these mascots here, trying to trying <laughs> to pick out the best. Of course, the Grand Canyon Lopes yeah, are high on my list. And you know why, right? You know why I'm a big fan of the Grand Canyon Lopes. Um, I know their head coach. Like, is Bryce Drew? Oh yes, Valparaiso Valpo University's forever. own. Oh, yes, my uh, alma mater. Uh, I didn't. I was. I went there after the shot that Bryce Drew hit. No, mm. that is not the reason I went to Valparaiso. Although it probably got it on the map for me in some way, shape, or form. Of course, uh, the Jenkins twins of Nicolet High School playing mm-hmm. a big role. <laughs> I'm not even going to say which which guy because I'll be wrong. I'm pretty sure that was Bill Jenkins who threw the pass to uh, Bryce Drew. But uh, 
you know, Bob Jenkins, his twin brother, also mm. played a big role for that team going to the Sweet 16. The Norse, uh, two teams named after the Gales in this tournament, St. Mary's and Iona. Yeah. Uh, mentioned the Paladines. That's a good one. The Gauchos of uh, UC Santa Barbara mm. winning their conference tournament out west. That's a good one. Uh, I got to say, I'm looking through this list, and now it's not as powerful as I thought it might be. There's a lot. There's a couple owls in here, mm-hmm. uh, just uh, just some of the usual usual suspects. I mean, there's some good mascots from power conference teams that we just take for granted because they're always in the tournament. The Friars, the Islanders mm-hmm. from Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, not terrible. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was maybe I was wrong. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, ben, any last thoughts before I let you go about this Marquette basketball team? Oh, I'm ready, man. Take it one game at a time, JR. That's what we do. Love it. Love it. The cliches are here. (laughs) The nonsense is here. The madness will be here in no time. Friday, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, should they be worried? That they're playing a team who that wears green on St. Patrick's Day. Ooh, I didn't even didn't even factor that into my thinking. And I for, even forgot it was St. Patrick's Day coming up. That's yeah. how uh, that's how lost I am in this world right now. Vermont, if you take the word green in French, or vert and mont vert. for mountain, you smash them together, you get the word Vermont, which is why Vermont is the green mountain state. Mm, yeah, lots of green. The lots more green you know, in, lots in of green. Yeah, I that is a concern. That is a concern that I'm sure Shaka will address pregame. <laughs> Do not. Uh, yeah. It'll be part of the scout, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, and uh, do the. I'm trying to remember, it's the home teams that wear white, right? Or the home teams, the better seeds that wear white. Mm-hmm. So, uh, a concern, a concern. Uh, yes, that's St. Patrick's Day. What's our tip time? One twenty in the afternoon. One forty-five. Milwaukee time. Two forty-five out in Columbus. All right, Columbus, Ohio. Ben Steele will be there. Follow him on Twitter at Ben Steele MJS. He'll have all kinds of updates for you, and uh, we will be back doing this again. Probably only if they make the final four, which uh, which that would be Who a does? great time. We should have we should have a big blowout party. We'll have uh, multiple guests or something on the podcast. It'll be it'll be really great uh, if uh, if Marquette gets that far. So enjoy the madness, enjoy the tournament. Thank you, Ben Steele, for joining me, and uh, appreciate you listening to this episode of the Point Forward Podcast. Take care, Ben. Thanks. Been fun.